Hello there everybody, it is Carissa, welcome back to my channel, I hope you guys are having a zenful day, and I am so excited for today's video, per usual, for today's ta Taco Tuesday. I am going to Taco Tuesday, I mean it's true. For today's Coffee Talk Tuesday, I've got the NASA mug again, you know why? Because I don't have any cooler cups yet. Today's coffee is just a traditional coffee with some almond milk and some Truvia because I thought I'd just keep it simple for you guys. We are going to be talking about ways to find yourself in 2019. I just wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to find yourself in 2019. These are some tips that I have taken in the last month or so to kind of bring me back to me. So if you're excited about this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and then subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. And other than that, let's just roll right into these tips. I had really struggled in 2018 to find who I am and kind of stick with it. I am a multi-passionate type of person, so I see myself doing a lot of different things. It's been hard for me to try to find who I am, but you know, I think I finally, I finally got it down packed. So my first tip is to kind of look at every single type of person that you've ever tried to be and really think about how you felt when you did that. For instance, I went through a phase of trying to be a like Instagram baddie as well as like a grungy as well as when I was younger, if I can find a picture I'll insert it, I tried to be like a hippie and you know, I've also gone through my 90s vibe as well. I also went through a really girly phase. How could I forget that? I also went through a sporty phase. <laughs> yeah, I've done it all. When I think about all those things, I wrote down, I seriously did this, I wrote down all the pros and cons, except for the ones that I was like, absolutely not, I would never go back to that, like the girly one. I look at myself in those dresses and I'm like, I mean, that's pretty, but uh, no. So basically I narrowed it down to three that I honestly felt most confident in. And that I would say is my 90s phase, my hippie phase, which was like in high school, which is funny and my grungy phase. Those were my three favorite phases that I honestly went through, so I was like, hmm, well, let's write down the pros and cons. After writing down the pros and cons, I had come to the conclusion that the 90s and hippie is kind of what I liked. Basically, outfits like this, those are the types that I really like. You know, style is all about yourself, and I think that I can mix the two and make them look pretty cool, so yeah. So that is the first step that I took and I was like, wow, okay, so how did I feel when I was, you know, in that little hippie stage versus, uh, you know, the whole 90s feel spiel. And I decided that I liked them both, so I kind of meshed them together. Honestly, it's just things that I dig and I feel comfortable in. Feeling comfortable is definitely my number one thing in which back in my girly stage and even my like Instagram baddie stage, comfortability was not there, my friends. So oh, my second tip is a really good one and is to look back on things that you would change. During my like 90s kind of minimalistic phase, I started to really get into the environment and I started learning, you know, the benefits of recycling and all that stuff, which I know I probably should have known, but honestly I never cared to know. And now it's like in 2019, I'm trying to become somewhat of a minimalist as well as make a constant effort to not shop anywhere but the thrift store for anything that I need as far as like room decor and outfit wise because I'm really trying to help the environment more this year. It's really important to me. And looking back on all of the other things that I have, all the other phases that I was going through, I look at the things that I would have changed and that most being, which I've talked about in my other videos, is my hair. <sighs> I've always wanted to be a silvery blonde. Always. Always. Instead, I decided I want to go lavender and then it turned into light pink and then it turned into hot pink and then here we are. Still not blonde. So that is something that I definitely would have changed. Look at what you could have changed and just kind of keep that in perspective because I decided to go all these colors that weren't what I really wanted to do when I wasn't in that phase that made me feel most comfortable. Make sense? I hope so. <laughs> Third tip is to ask friends and family, what phase of your life do you think that I was most comfortable in or I was most me? I asked my boyfriend because he knows me better than anybody. And if I were to ask like my parents that question, they'd probably be like, what are you talking about? So I asked my boyfriend that and he definitely said when I started thrifting is when he feels like I was probably most confident and comfortable in myself. And again, that was more of the just minimalistic, plain Jane, oversized, I don't even know what to call that style, but 
he agreed with the one that I had already narrowed down to. So that's when I started to think, hmm, we're getting somewhere. The fourth step that I took, I looked at all of my hobbies and then I said, okay, I'm really going to focus on that. And the reason that this kind of incorporates into that is because thinking back to like my Fashion Nova days of me wanting to be an Instagram baddie, I lost all of my hobbies. I wasn't filming anything. I was only taking selfies or like butt photos. <laughs> filming, editing, singing, all that just wasn't going on. And the creative world has always been the world that I'm most comfortable in. Uh, content creating is something that I seriously enjoy and love so much and when I was trying to be the p person that I, I honestly wasn't, I wasn't focusing on those hobbies. Those are my hobbies. I've always been a lot different than the average gal. So really just think about your hobbies and surround yourself about it. What are you good at that you enjoy doing? I'm good at makeup, but do I enjoy doing it on other people? Absolutely freaking not. I do not like doing makeup on other people. You know, every once in a while it's fun. Honestly, half the time I don't even like doing makeup on myself. Just because you're good at something doesn't mean that it is your hobby that you need to stick with. And that is why I gave up the whole makeup Instagrammer thing. My fifth tip is a very, very important one. And I actually have something special for you guys at the end of the video, but traveling. It is when I took my last travel trip to North Carolina. We road trip there and stay out of the car. Honestly, that is when I, everything just kind of clicked. I was like, wow, yeah. Um, after evaluating everything and going on this trip, I am 100% sure that I know who I am now. And traveling is something that seriously helps your psyche. I have really bad anxiety as well as really bad OCD. And you know, staying out of the car, you can't really be OCD because shit's gonna get everywhere. And it kind of pushes you out of your comfort zone. It also triggers my anxiety because I'm like, oh my God, what if someone's gonna come like kill me? But then you sleep in the car and you realize nobody's gonna kill you. They don't even know you're in the car. You know, forcing myself to get out there and travel has really helped me psychologically understand that, you know, you just gotta do it. You gotta take those dives in life. You gotta, you know, step out of your comfort zone and do things that make you uncomfortable because that's honestly what makes you a better person inside and it helps you realize what you're doing. Go outside. I am telling you, it. I can't even explain the feeling that it gives me, but I can ensure you that it's going to help you as well. So before I stop this video. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a b-roll of my trip to North Carolina because it was so much fun. I didn't get enough footage to film an entire video because uh, there's just a lot that went on there because we were honestly there to look for apartments. Didn't work out. I mean, you know, it's cool. So here's a little b-roll of my travel video. So I'm just going to say bye now. Thank you so much for watching. I know this was kind of a super quick video, but I kind of wanted to keep it short and simple. And if you guys want to dive in more to what I was saying, or if you have any questions, concerns, comments, just, you know, comment them down below and we can totally talk about it or we can talk about it in next week's coffee talk. So thank you so much for watching. Here's my trip to North Carolina and I will see you guys in Friday's video.